So if I want to talk to Josh, I have to look this way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Josh. Hey. <laughs> anyway, g'day, guys. Uh, we're back again with another eschatology study with Dave and John. So g'day, guys. Hey. How are we doing? Yeah, doing well, thanks. You're doing well? So I'll just Josh. do a, a little recap of I... Sure. Um, we last week looked at this uh, heavenly city, the city of God, coming down uh, out of heaven. So it's the birth of the church. The church was born from above. And uh, in other parts of scripture, it talks about the Jerusalem from above and the Jerusalem from below. This is uh, the city of God that is born of God, and it comes down and come, it's heaven coming to earth. Um, a lot of people um, in my background uh, believe that it's a city that is going to, a physical city, is going to come down and land in Jerusalem and Jesus is going to set up his throne there and uh, rule for a thousand years. Um, hopefully we've um, given some other thoughts around that topic. Um, but uh, uh, this is a scripture that came to mind when I was looking at this today. Um, the day is coming, in fact is now is, when those who worship God, you will no longer worship him in this mountain or that mountain, but you'll worship him in spirit and in truth. So this city is not necessarily a geographical um, location. It is actually the presence of God in the church. Mm. It would be a regressive thing if it was a geographical location, right. according yes. to yeah. John 4. Yes, so, um, so yes, it's a it's a temple, um, it's a holy of holies, and it is the church. And so we are the containers of God. So we're the temple, the holy of holies, uh, where God dwells. Um, and it also promises that the that this curse will be done away with. And I would say that's the cross, that Jesus took the sins and iniquities of the world, and therefore uh, the curse that goes with it. The, the curse coming from Eden yes, in the fall. Yeah, yes. yeah. Um, so no longer can, uh, as we spoke about a few weeks back, that the devil has the power to, dis to deceive the nations any longer, um, although he doesn't attempt and spews lies into the world, but the church, if it, if it chooses to rise up, has the power to break that over people's lives. So when we go and share the gospel, uh, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. Um, and the devil can't stop that. Um, so what else do we look at? We look at the fact that uh, the city was a, uh, a cube, which yep. was a hint back to the Old Testament in uh, the temple. Um, but it is the, not just the temple, it's the Holy of Holies because it the temple had a, uh, the outer courts was lit by sunlight. The holy place was was lit by candles, but the holy of holies was illuminated by the presence of God. Shekinah glory. Shekinah glory, and that's us. Mm. So our life is filled with that glory. Um, in that's us in the in the the New Jerusalem sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Um, so we need to have a, probably a better opinion of ourselves that uh, we are actually the, the dwelling place of God. Mm. Christ in us is the hope of glory. Mm. Um, it's the promise that Paul uh, conveyed to us. Um, and we're kept. Um, the Bible says here that, that nothing can, can harm us in that mm. place. Uh, we're kept by God. Um, so it's a matter of now just resting in him. Um, there was... The city had uh, 12 gates, which represents the church, and uh, f um, four corners, which represent the earth. So um, we go into that city through these gates. Mm -hmm. So the church actually is part of the process of spreading the gospel. So as a church, we're inviting people to come into the, to the city, and uh, those gates are made of pearl. Single pearl for each one. Mm. So, what do you think would be a pearl? Well, I, I mean, the obvious thing with pearls is that they're born of of kind of 
out of the oyster in in the oysters out of from the oysters suffering if suffering, you like yeah yeah and death so yeah it's a picture yeah, of true picture of Christ um, mm. and above the pearly gate is the names of the tribes of Israel which again is referring to the church yeah. so it's as co-workers with Christ, we are drawing people and we're saying the spirit and the bride say, come, yeah. come um, to, the, to the holy city of God. Can you explain to the folks at home why a pearl is the result of a oyster's suffering? Um, just all the animal fans out there, I don't, I just, <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand that one. Well, the, <laughs> it irritate, the, the, if you put a bit of sand in, a, in an oyster, the oyster is irritated and so it starts to try and um, relieve the suffering by mm. putting, I don't know what sort of solution it is, but it covers it. Layers of... Layers of yeah. something from the, in, from the oyster, mm. and it just keeps going until it's a, a pearl. Yeah. So it's the suffering that uh, creates the beauty. Y okay. You're oh. going to have the entire pearl industry uh, struck down for animal cruelty now, Josh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, the rabbit hole just keeps getting deeper and yeah. deeper. That's right. Um, oh, thank you. Carry on. Yeah. So yeah. So pearls are, are made by suffering, and so we ent uh, we enter this holy city through the the death of Christ mm. and the sufferings of Christ. Um, uh, and our names are written there. Um, Second Peter four says, "By the promise of God, we are made made partakers of His divine nature." This is why the city is gold. Yeah. We always hear about people walking on the golden streets and pearly gates but the gold is divine nature and um, we are partakers of that divine nature so this city is describing us hmm. so, um, it, us as glorified glorified Christ people of God hmm. um, so yes so it, it's a beautiful picture of of the church that um, we are partakers of the divine nature of God he's infused his life into us and we are an expression of him and we're inviting people to come into that city which is a really beautiful picture um, it, it, it's almost again one of those sort of too good to be true pictures where you know you sort of look at yourself now and you think hmm but then you, you see this yeah. picture of the promised and, and it's 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 aspirational but not for us to try and strive to achieve it but to no. take hold of it in christ yeah and that's that's what faith is isn't it we, yeah um, we believe it by faith. We accept it that this is who we are. We don't feel like that. I don't feel like I'm partakers of the divine nature, but that's mm. what the Bible declares us as, so uh, I choose to believe it. Mm. Um, and then uh, I'm not going to try and read these, uh, these precious stones because I can't even pronounce them. <laughs> Josh might be able to. Uh, um, but there's 12 of them, mm. um, 12 precious stones in this city. And uh, I think it's a reflection back to the priesthood. The uh, breastplate of breastplate, the, yeah. the ephod. Yeah. And um, it's because uh, this used to sit on the, on the, the front of the priest. And uh, it's a picture of our high priest yeah. has these precious stones, mm. which are us. And yep. he's, got him, he's got us on his heart. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, um, we're in his mind, we're in his heart where his presence is in us um, and we're co-workers with him in this incredible mm. opportunity to invite people into the, the city of God because Jesus has, a, has achieved salvation for, mm. for everyone. That's why it says every tongue, tribe and nation are welcome. Yep. Um, and I, I think it's, we need to highlight that, that everyone's welcome, David. Mm -hmm. yep. every, no matter what background, what c colour you dye your hair, everyone's welcome. Mm. So there's no one who's so bad they're not welcome. No, no one's excluded. That's good. Um, which, you know, some people find that very hard because uh, I've heard many people say they don't want to go to heaven and find their ex-husband um, <laughs> there. But well, it's like that uh, I read a novel recently and the character was talking about forgiveness as this beautiful concept uh, that is until that you find someone who's done something bad enough to really need forgiving for. <laughs> 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 that's good uh, yeah so we need to communicate that message this is uh, the message of the gospel that um, the gospel 
um, is for everyone, and everyone is, in, is welcome. That's why it's this um, four sides to this city, so it goes to every corner of the earth and um, saying, come. And on each wall, there's three gates representing the Trinity, saying, come into the, the presence of God from whatever tribe you're in. Um, uh, and what else do we have? We've got... Um, uh, so our sins are forgiven, and uh, we know that we're in God's heart. He wears us on his breast um, and treasures us. We are his treasure, um, precious stones. Um, and I believe that this is not just talking about heaven when we die. I think this is a picture of how God actually sees his church, that we're his precious people yeah um, for sure and that's a you know it's a covenant me message you know i will be your god and you shall be my people that's not just israel that's everybody i mean if christ is already in the role of our high priest well there it is you know yes yeah. that's, that's the whole picture yeah um uh, yeah, so it's it's every t tongue, tribe, nation. Um, in the Old Testament, it was focused purely on Israel. Um, Israel was chosen not to be chosen. They were chosen to bring forth the Messiah. Um, now the focus is not on Israel. The focus is on all tongues, all tribes, all nations. Um, Which has become what the New Testament calls spiritual Israel, if you like. Yes. Paul in Romans, yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and Paul echoes that. There's neither Jew nor Greek, bond or free man, but mm -hmm. we're all one in Christ. And we yep. need to start to think that way, that everyone is um, all accepted in Christ, mm -hmm. uh, already achieved. God has already done that. Uh, when he died, he died for the whole world, not just for the elect, not just for those who are going to accept Christ, but for every, every single person. Um, and so we as the bride of Christ need to call out to the world come come and see what God has done and, it, and if we see the world as already having been worthy of Christ dying for Christ felt that the world was worthy of his death then mm. that's going to change the way we view uh, people outside of the church if you like yeah. uh, and people who maybe are a bit challenging to uh, to deal with mm. definitely um, and uh, we go into chapter 22 and we've got um, a beautiful garden. Um, so he showed me a river and the water of life, clear as crystal, coming out of the throne of God and the Lamb. In the middle of the street on either side of the river was a tree of life bearing 12 kinds of fruit, yielding every fr fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were the healing of the nations. And there's a lot of echoes here in, back in the Old Testament. And, um, is it Ezekiel? Yes. Is this, the river, wherever the river Flying went, from, life yep. came. Yep. And it came. Um, this is, we, I mean, w the scriptures also say that out of our innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Yes. So we can bring healing to the nations mm. by sharing the, the love of Christ. So back to, to John chapter 4 and you know, the water of life. And yeah. Yeah. But also a return to Eden. Uh, the yeah, the garden. Yep. Um, so we have a, a picture of a city, but it's also a city of the garden. Yes. Is, um, the, the metaphors just keep twisting. Right. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, yeah. So it's the eternal Eden, the eternal city of God. Um, and uh, there's a whole lot of echoes here. I mean, he makes me de lie down in green pastures um, yeah, um, besides still waters. Um, and the tree of life which we couldn't eat from in the Garden of Eden because we ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil mm. and ended into the delusion and lies of Satan but God is saying no mm. come and eat from the tree of life mm. and, and which is Jesus yes. <laughs> he is the tree of life um, we can eat freely he's the bread of life um, he's the water of life He's the light of the world, and all those p 
pictures and images are actually in these part, last mm. couple of chapters um, to finish this incredible book of symbolism. Um, it's just like John is just pouring them all out now. Well, this um, really goes back to the Gospel of John, doesn't it? Where Jesus says, I am, I am this, I am and water, I am li light, I am yes. all of these things, yes. and yeah. bread of life, and, 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 and here they come again in the, in the eternal city yeah. slash garden. Yes. Yes. Um, slash temple slash. <laughs> yes. um, That's right. Uh, bride. Yep. Um, um, so yeah. So so Phyllis finishes with um, um, a beautiful picture of us calling out to the world and blessed he that hears the words of this prophecy of this book. You're going to be blessed. I hope you have been blessed listening to these studies, um, because I think it, the book of Revelation. Uh, as difficult as it is, it is full of just beautiful images of, of God um, if we choose to see it. Mm. Uh, I never got blessed by thinking Henry Kissinger was the Antichrist. <laughs> it never blessed me. Bless you. Even though he's still alive and still a possi slim possibility. <laughs> um, so um, I, I remember one day, as a short testimony, um, a certain person came up to me of a certain denomination, which I won't mention, but they said, um, Jesus is definitely not um, God. He's a angel, but he's not God. And um, I said, I could probably prove from Scripture that he is God. And um, they had their own Bible, which they changed a little bit. Yes. Um, and said he wasn't Almighty God, he was a God. And but the, but I went to this last passage and I said, um, so who is the Alpha and the Omega? <laughs> and I said, well, that's God. So why is God coming quickly? Um, and behold, his, his name is Jesus Christ. Uh, it's and they went, oh, does it say that? Uh, uh, yes. Um, yes, l the, la the, the second last verse. Yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. And then the, and John says, Come, Lord Jesus. Mm. Um, and the grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Mm. Um, and that's what it's about. The throne, um, the church is the center of God's rule. Um, we're in the, in, in the middle of God's will in this city. Um, and uh, he says, us, and I'll give you the nations as your inheritance. Hmm. So I think it's a challenge. I'm going to actually probably speak about this on Sunday. <laughs> but the, the whole idea of the church needs to be inclusive. We need to break out of our sectarian views and really start to see uh, a church that is multicultural um, and that God actually is embracing the world and wants us to also do that. He wants us to be totally inclusive of every tongue, tribe, nation. Yep. Um, and it's a challenge because we like to hang out with our own people. It's we, that old adage, birds of a feather flock together. Yeah. And <laughs> yes. but, but in a sense, that's sort of lazy socialization. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so even though it's natural. And yeah, it's yeah. easy to do. Easy. Yeah. And it's more difficult to... Um, to become friends with people who may be homeless or their tribe is in its engines or of people of different colour, um, different ethnic background. It's, it is difficult, um, but this is the heart of God. It's, it's for everyone. Um, and uh, that's th the freedom of the New Testament or New Covenant is God has moved his attention from a nation to the world. And the ideal church in the uh, uh, in the New Testament, the Church of Antioch, um, was multi-ethnic, multicultural. Mm. Uh, that was one of the the, the markers of, of, the of idealism, yeah, yeah, in that church. So next next week we're going to do um, Q and A. So we want you to send in your questions that you have. I've, I've got a couple of people that's asked a, a few things. Um, so probably a repeating of some of the things we've dealt with because one of, well, about three people have asked me explain the rapture again. I missed that week. Um, so we'll have to go back over that and 
explain that. Um, and um, some people are saying, well, I haven't seen the second coming yet. No? Well, um, I thought... In, oh, the, okay. in our studies. Right. I thought we dealt with that, I but that's all right. Yes, but that's, we'll, we'll go back over that. Uh, especially this last verse. I mean, yes. Come, Lord Jesus. Um, and uh, there's a few other questions, but we'll get to them next week. But uh, hopefully you'll engage with this and send in some questions for us to, to struggle with and hopefully answer. If we can't, then that's okay. Um, we'll all struggle with the questions <laughs> together. Uh, the questions are good. You know, Jesus never answered people really directly. He, he always, when they ask a question, you answer with the question. Oh, well, we should do that. That'll we make it easier that. for us. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think that? Yeah, it could be question. such a boring That's video. A good, let me ask you a question. <laughs> yeah. um, That'd but, be like watching Dora the Explorer, just like <laughs> talking to the camera and then no response back. Yeah, yes. <laughs> But we'll try. We'll, we'll, um, but we need your participation, so please send in your questions and all your comments. Um, anything you want to add, Dave? No, that's, I think we can yep. end off. Excellent. So next week's going to be a big week full of questions, hopefully. Yep. So just, uh, yeah, we'll reiterate that again. Send them in. And uh, we, we're going to do the songs in Revelation. We could start with some of that. Yep. And um, looking at all the different uh, beautiful worship songs in in the book of Revelation, and that would be a good way to, to um, uh, uh, side by side with some questions. Like a benediction, if you like. Mm, yeah. Awesome. All right, thank Thanks you for God. watching, guys. See you next week. See ya.